Situated in the Horn of Africa, Ethiopia has a rich and diverse history that spans thousands of years. In fact, this country is one of the world's oldest civilizations that continues to exist and is often nicknamed the Cradle of Humanity. But before we get deep into this video, make sure you subscribe and share this video with your friends and family. This way, we're encouraged to bring real, informative, and entertaining content to you every week. On November 24, 1974, Donald Johnson and Tom Gray were at the site of Hadar in Ethiopia where they discovered Lucy, a 3.2 million year old fossil skeleton of a human ancestor. This skeleton is our earliest mark of humanity existing on this planet, and since then, millions of people have made their mark in the cradle of humanity and beyond. The earliest known history of Ethiopia can be traced to the Aksumite Empire, emerging around the 1st century AD. The Aksumites were known for their advanced civilization, trade networks, and the use of the Gaz script. They adopted Christianity in the 4th century, making Ethiopia one of the earliest Christian nations in the world. Throughout the medieval period, various kingdoms and dynasties rose and fell in Ethiopia. The Zagwe dynasty, which succeeded the Aksumites, was eventually supplanted by the Solomonic dynasty in the 13th century. The Solomonic dynasty claimed descent from King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, yet they soon faced many external threats from Islamic and European colonial forces. In 1896, the Battle of Adwa was a legendary win of the Ethiopian forces against an Italian invasion. The 20th century brought many historical and political changes to Ethiopia. Mass violence, economic instability, the infamous Ethiopian famine of the mid-1980s, and the authoritarian rule of the Derg Empire made Ethiopia one of the most unstable countries in the world. However, in 1991, a coalition of rebel forces overthrew the Derg regime and established a federal system that prevails to date. But what made Ethiopia stand so strongly against every external threat for almost 2,000 years? Ethiopia's rugged terrain and difficult landscape made it extremely challenging for invaders to succeed in their coups. The country is naturally protected by borders of steep mountains and has historical experience with warfare techniques and army formations. Ethiopians also have a strongly united sense of identity, tied to their Christian roots and unique culture, which has motivated them for centuries to present a united front against enemies. Thanks to such an extensive past, Ethiopia is frozen in history, unlike any other country in the world. Whether it's the tribal system of the country, the 109 spoken languages, or unique cultural practices, Ethiopia is a treasure trove of surprises. Over 67% of the Ethiopian population follows Christianity, followed by Islam at 31% and Judaism at 2%. While there are more than 80 distinct ethnic groups in Ethiopia, some of the most prominent and significant ones include the Oromo, Amhara, Tigray, and Somali. Numbering about 40 million, or 36% of the total Ethiopian population, the Oromos are the largest ethnic group in Ethiopia. The Oromo people have traditionally been involved in various occupations, with a significant portion engaged in agriculture. They're known for cultivating crops like coffee, teff, and maize. Many Oromo also practiced pastoralism, especially in the eastern and southern parts of the fertile Oromia region. The Oromo have their own language, Oromo, and a rich cultural heritage, evident in the way they dress and behave as a society. They also played a pivotal role in global history by introducing the world's earliest democracies. On the other hand, the Amhara people reside primarily in the Amhara region, and they have had a significant influence on Ethiopia's culture and history. Most of the Amhara are primarily agrarian and cultivate crops, while others work in the country's urban, intellectual, and political spheres. Amharic is the official language of Ethiopia and is widely spoken among this tribe. The Amhara have also traditionally been associated with the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church. The Tigrayans are another major ethnic group, residing mainly in the Tigray region in northern Ethiopia. Tigrinya is their primary language, and they have a long history of cultural and political influence. The Tigrayans played a central role in the struggle against the Derg regime and continue to have a significant presence in the country's politics. When it comes to their occupation, weaving is one of their most sought-after traditional skills around the world. However, like every Ethiopian tribe, Tigrayans are also heavily involved in farming and growing crops such as teff, barley, and lentils. Last but not least, the Somali tribe can be found near the borders of Somalia. This group adheres to Islamic practices, speaks Somali, and has an important and deep impact on the regional dynamics of the Horn of Africa. The Somali tribe relies on pastoralism and trade, with livestock being a critical part of their lifestyle. 
Ethiopia's landscape is incredibly diverse, characterized by distinct regions and geographical features that vary across different parts of the country. The reason Ethiopian tribesmen and their cultures are so vastly different from one another is the way the country is geographically divided by nature. Teeming with mountains, deserts, forests, and much more, Ethiopia is home to some of the most diverse landscapes that will shock you and render you speechless. Often referred to as the Roof of Africa, the Ethiopian highlands represent a breathtaking and ecologically significant region in the heart of Ethiopia. Stretching across central and northern parts of the country, this highland area is characterized by a variety of distinctive geographical features and rugged topography. Here you'll find vast plateaus, deep valleys, and towering mountain ranges with the Simeon Mountains being the most famous for their dramatic escarpments and majestic peaks. One of the key features in these mountain ranges is Ras Dashen, Ethiopia's highest peak. These highlands play a crucial role in the country's hydrology, serving as the primary source of many major Ethiopian rivers. The Blue Nile begins its journey here, and terraced fields are a common sight on the steep slopes, where crops such as teff, barley, and maize are cultivated by local communities. Moreover, the highlands are home to many Ethiopian tribes, including the Amhara, Tigray, Gurage, Sidama, and Walaita tribes. When it comes to Ethiopia's most distinctive natural features, you can ignore the Great Rift Valley, a remarkable trench that runs from the northeast to the south of Ethiopia. The most exciting thing about the Great Rift Valley is that it is the physical proof of the African continent in the process of splitting into two approximately 5 million years from now. Running parallel to the Red Sea, the Great Rift Valley is home to a series of fascinating geographical elements. It boasts vast escarpments, deep valleys, and an array of lakes, many of which are situated at high elevations. Lakes such as Abijat and Shala are renowned for their scenic beauty, surrounded by hot springs and unique geological formations. Tourists can enjoyably relax in these hot springs that are believed to have magical healing powers. The Rift Valley's lakes and wetlands also support a wide range of bird life, making it a hub for birdwatchers and ecotourism. The geological activity in the Great Valley is particularly intriguing. It is a region of volcanic landscapes marked by active and dormant volcanoes. One of the most most active volcanoes in the world, Erta Ale is found here. You can observe lava flows and colorful hydrothermal springs that create an otherworldly and arid environment. Marking the northern end of the Great Rift Valley on the African mainland is the Danakil Depression, famed for its cruel and extreme environment. Only a handful of the world's bravest daredevils have enjoyed a trip to this part of Ethiopia, where ethereal landscapes meet geological miracles. The Danakil Depression is one of the hottest places on the planet, with temperatures regularly exceeding 120 degrees Fahrenheit during the daytime. But what makes this desolate environment one of the most inhabitable places on Earth is within the heart of the Danakil Depression. Underneath the depression are three tectonic plates pulling apart, creating a zone of intense volcanic and seismic activity, with active volcanoes and continuously bubbling lava lakes on full display for visitors. One of the most remarkable features of the Danakil Depression is its colorful hydrothermal springs. Often rich in minerals and salts, these springs create a visually stunning and surreal landscape with their vibrant hues. The most famous of these is the Dalal Sulphur Springs, where the water's colors range from neon green to vibrant yellow, and the air is thick with the pungent scent of sulphur. If anything, the region is nothing short of a scene from another planet. Move yourself to the southeastern and eastern regions of the country, you'll find yourself in Ethiopia's lowlands and deserts, stretching into the Somali regional state. With the climate here being notably drier and hotter than the highlands, these areas are marked by vast open plains, arid landscapes, and minimal vegetation thanks to temperatures going upwards of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. While the lowlands and deserts are often seen as harsh and unforgiving, they are not devoid of life. The region supports wildlife adapted to the conditions, including unique bird species such as the Somali ostrich. Additionally, the areas near the Ethiopia-Kenya border are part of larger migratory routes for animals like gravy zebras and Garanux. Animals aren't the only exception here, because the lowlands are where you'll find numerous Ethiopian tribes and pastoralist communities, including the Barana and Guji. These tribes rely on camel, goat, and sheep herding as a way of life, moving their herds across these vast landscapes in search of water and grazing areas. The eastern side of Ethiopia features relatively flat and undulating landscapes, named the Eastern Plateaus or the Somali Plateau of Ethiopia. 
This vast area is home to diverse ethnic groups, primarily the Somali people, who have adapted to a semi-arid environment with distinctive seasonal lifestyles. Extending from Somalia into Ethiopia, the Somali Plateau is an elevated region marked by rocky outcrops, dry grasslands, and sparse vegetation. On the other hand, the eastern plateaus feature fertile lands, valleys, plenty of water sources, as well as settled communities engaged in small-scale farming. Western Ethiopia is characterized by lush and dense rainforests, forming part of the larger Congo Basin rainforest system. Offering a stark contrast to the arid and highland areas, the western lowlands and forests of Ethiopia are as full of life as any place can be. This region is exceptionally ecologically diverse, hosting very plant and animal species, including endangered and rare creatures like the Ethiopian wolf and bale monkey. The forests play a critical role in regulating local and regional climates, with the dense vegetation acting as a carbon sink. Indigenous communities inhabit these forested regions, practicing subsistence agriculture and traditional farming methods. They rely on the forest for resources like timber, honey, and various other natural products. Given the country's vast history with mankind, its unbelievably stunning natural beauty, and the fact that it's the most tectonically active place in the world, Ethiopia is a tourist's dream destination. Not only is it teeming with unbelievable sights, but also offers you a lot more things to do than to see. For one, Ethiopia's bustling capital city. Addis Ababa is a vibrant metropolis that shows the country's perfect blend of culture with modernity. In Addis Ababa, you'll find gleaming skyscrapers alongside historic neighborhoods, with traditional mud and thatch homes. The city's central location in the country makes it a pivotal transportation hub with an international airport and a well-developed road network, facilitating travel within Ethiopia and beyond. The city is also known for its vibrant markets, with the Mercado being one of the largest open-air markets in Africa. Here, you can explore a labyrinth of stalls selling a wide range of goods including traditional crafts, spices, textiles, and fresh produce. For history enthusiasts, Addis Ababa provides a wealth of cultural and historical sites. The National Museum is a must-visit, housing a significant collection of Ethiopian art, history, and archaeology, including the famous fossil Lucy. Similarly, the Ethnological Museum within the former palace of Emperor Haile Selassie offers insight into Ethiopia's imperial history. It goes without saying that where there's a long cultural history, there's mouth-watering food, and Ethiopia might just win that contest with its delightful fusion of flavors. Ethiopian cuisine is renowned for injera, a spongy sourdough bread, and a variety of stews. Bayaina too is the perfect meal for vegetarians, while darawad is perhaps one of the most famous Ethiopian dishes. Nestled in the Amhara region, Lalibela is another one of Ethiopia's tourist gems. This extraordinarily historical and religious site is celebrated for its rock home churches, earning it the title of being a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Nicknamed New Jerusalem, the defining features of Lalibela are its 13 remarkable churches, carved entirely from solid rock. These churches were created in the 12th century under the rule of King Lalibela, who sought to establish a New Jerusalem in Ethiopia. The architecture and engineering involved in hoeing these churches from the living rock are nothing short of astonishing, and they are considered among the greatest architectural achievements of the medieval world. Each of the churches has its own distinct design and features, with intricate carvings and interior decorations. Notable among them is the Church of St. George, which is often seen as the most iconic, thanks to its striking cross-shaped design. It's no surprise that Lalibela is a center of pilgrimage and devotion for Ethiopian Orthodox Christians. It attracts thousands of pilgrims, both local and international, particularly during significant religious festivals with colorful processions. Once the capital city of the ancient Aksumite Empire, Aksum is a city of immense historical and archaeological significance, dating back to the 1st century CE. One of the most iconic features of Aksum is its collection of towering obelisks. These large, intricately carved stone pillars, some of which are over 20 meters tall, stand as silent witnesses to the city's illustrious past. 
The most famous of these obelisks is the Stele of Axum, which stands in a field near the city center. These obelisks are believed to have served as grave markers for Axumite rulers and are part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site in Axum. The city also boasts ancient tombs, many of which are carved into the rock and adorned with intricate carvings. These tombs provide insight into the customs and traditions of the Axumite people. Furthermore, Axum is associated with the legend of the Ark of the Covenant, a significant religious relic in Ethiopian Christianity. Axum is also home to several important churches, including St. Mary of Zion, one of the oldest Christian churches in the world. It is believed to house the Ark of the Covenant, but you can determine the truth when you visit it yourself. Referred to as the Camelot of Africa, Gondar served as the capital of Ethiopia during the 17th and 18th centuries, making it one of the must-visit sites for tourists today. The feature you'll immediately notice within a minute of stepping into Gondar is its abundance of medieval castles and churches, all preserved as if they were built yesterday. However, these architectural marvels were built at least four centuries ago and provide a spectacular insight into how Ethiopia was under its imperial era. Also known as Fasil Gabi, Emperor Fasilade's castle is the most prominent medieval castle here, renowned for its high stone walls. Or you can visit Deborah Birhan Selassie Church, one of the most beautiful Ethiopian churches with artistic ceilings adorned with angelic faces. Before we close off this video, let's take you back up north to the largest lake in the country. Lake Tana is the source of the majestic Blue Nile and a place of scenic beauty, religious, and historical significance. Along the shores of Lake Tana are numerous historic monasteries, dating back many centuries and housing hundreds of religious artifacts and manuscripts. The lake is also a vital resource for the people of the region. Fishing is an important source of livelihood for the local communities, and traditional papyrus boats are still used for transportation and fishing. So no matter where you go, Ethiopia will always be steeped in its history and maintain an identity unmoved by the rest of the world. And this is the end of our video. If you liked traveling to the magnificent land of Ethiopia, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. That way, we'll book you a passenger seat on our upcoming video travels. In the in the meantime, check out this cool video right here.